Hi everybody, my name's Dick Coughlin, aka Brother Neuro, and in this video I would like to talk about a recent controversy and scandal that has been all over the press and the media. And I waited a couple of weeks before talking about this because I wanted it to play out a bit just to see how it went. And now I'm going to sound off. And it's a controversy regarding a comedian uh, called Jimmy Carr and a joke that he told uh, in his most recent Netflix special. Now, I'm sure most of you know who Jimmy Carr is. He seems he's popular enough, but just in case you're not, Jimmy Carr is a British comedian um, who's been going, oh God, must be, you know, I think 25 you know, ish years now. Um, his first uh, one man special came out in, I think, 2002 or three. And uh, he's, he's he, I don't know how many shows he's done, but it's a lot. He's done, and he's been to America. He's also a TV presenter, writer, and actor. And uh, but as far as his stand-up goes, um, his his sort of signature is uh, him sort of doing a very, very, very highly exaggerated um, uh, version uh, of himself of the sort of upper class sneering Englishman who, uh, you know, who looks, who, you know, who tells very, very uh, controversial, um, you know, edgy, or you might even say offensive uh, jokes uh, in, a, in a very, very deadpan uh, and, and way that it was almost sort of a patronising uh, manner. Um, it's the thing that he's known for. It's what he's been doing since the year dot. Now, his most recent one-man show is, is a, a one-hour show called uh, His Dark Material. Um, and, uh, and the whole premise of this show is that these are, these are jokes that whilst he is well known for doing, uh, doing material that is already, you know, uh, you know near, near the bone or, you know, or, or maybe over the line, um, the fact of the matter is this is where he's going to push it just a, a little bit further. And there was one joke in particular that uh, that he tells, which is right at the very end of the show, uh, which is specifically about uh, the Holocaust, you know, um, specifically talking about uh, the murder of Roma or travellers or gypsies in the Holocaust. Um, now, uh, I'm not going to play any clips from the show because I don't want to get fucking copywritten by um, uh, by Netflix. But the joke basically goes, you know, in, you know, in, in, in the the joke that he tells is essentially him saying that people always talk about the millions of Jews that were killed in the Holocaust. But one, one thing that people, you know, almost you know rarely talk about or bring up are the tens of thousands of gypsies who were also killed and uh, and slaughtered by the Nazis. You know, and the reason for that is because nobody ever wants to talk about the good things. Right. Now, that's it. Now, now I'm not here to pass judgment on the joke itself. Um, I, I, you know, as far as it goes as a joke, um, I, you know, I thought, didn't think it, you know, thought it was fine. Um, it was certainly in, you know, on it was certainly in keeping with the kind of uh, humour that Jimmy Carr w would tell. And it's certainly, you know, and, uh, you know, and, you know, whilst I cannot look into Jimmy Carr's heart and know this, um, I find it very difficult to believe that this is Jimmy Carr expressing his own personal point of view. Um, however, the reaction to this, you know, was, for me, it says a lot about how we, you know, about just in general about how we uh, you know, we allow ourselves we allow ourselves to be manipulated and caught up in the moment and how you know when we actually take a step back and look at the bigger picture and look at all of the elements we can actually see there's a lot more nefarious uh, things going on here um, and I'm going to try my best to break break this down and I'm trying to try to do it as well in as fair and objective a way as I possibly can. Now, the main criticism I have with those who attempt to defend uh, not just this joke that Jimmy Carr told, but any joke that you know that causes an outrage that a comedian tells is, and and Jimmy Carr himself is guilty of this, um, is, is that they tend to it tend to be tends to be defended on the principle of it's a joke, it's just a joke, and I not only reject you know, that as an argument, I find that to be more offensive 
than almost you know, any joke that you can tell because it suppose it, you know, it, it suggests that you know when you tell a joke that comedy or jokes don't matter and i think it's you know i think we need only look at the influence and the reverence at which certain comedians are you know are held held up to and viewed and how you know influential they are people like George Carlin, Bill Hicks, Richard Pryor. You know, on the te you know on TV, people like John Stewart. You know, we need only look at this, and we can see that quite clearly. You know, n nothing is. You know, you can't say something's just a joke because that would suggest that you know jokes don't matter. It's quite obvious that from the reactions, the visceral reactions that some people can have to certain jokes, that you know. You know, these aren't just jokes and it would be like you know imagine so imagine me trying to defend imagine someone trying to defend the the anti-semitic you know white power lyrics of the band screwdriver with by by saying you know oh it's just a song or someone you know or, or someone trying to defend uh, you, know, you know the protocols of zion or mind cap saying oh it's just a book you know you know, I know those are ridiculous extremes, but the fact is that if you, you know, you know, that's what's being done here. You're, you know, it's suggesting that it's suggesting that things don't matter if they're in a joke form. And that's clearly not true because jokes, you know, jo jokes are one of the few jokes are one of the most heavily scrutinized you know, art forms, you know, uh, I think uh, Jim Norton says it best. He says, like, you know, comedy is one of the you know few things that when somebody doesn't like it, they will go out of their way to make sure other people, you know, who do like it can't enjoy it. Like nobody will go. Nobody goes to an art gallery and puts a blanket over a painting they don't like. But, you know, so, so you know, and, and it's, it's, it's an important, it's a powerful, you know, it is a powerful medium. And it can be, you know, and, and it can, you can do a lot with it, and a lot has been done. And I find it incredibly, you know, I think it's a cop out when people try and defend it on the basis that it's just a joke. Um, in in Carr's defence, he went a little bit further than that, and I will talk about that towards the end. So, but that's the first thing. I think you should be able to defend a joke, you know, on the, on, you know, in, you know, on its own merit. You should be able to defend it artistically. Um, you know, uh, you know, morally, in any way, in, in any way that is necessary, you should be able to, you know, creatively, you know, you know, philosophically, politically, whatever way, you know, it matters. You should be able to, you know, rational to rationally, you know, justify, and you know, and explain, or you know, or counter any objections to a joke, um, in in a way that doesn't, you know, and you're not going to. If somebody doesn't like a joke, they're not. They're never going to like a joke. They're never going to like it. But what you can do is you can, you know, generally, and I have done this with people who have, you know, had objections to, you know, sh to, you know, certain things that, you know, who have, you know, walked out of shows or objected to material that either I've told or other people have told on a show that I happen to be on. You know, you know, if you, if you explain it to people in a, in a, you know, in a way, they won't, they won't like that joke, you know, but they will, they will get, they'll get it. They'll understand why their objections to it there's a slant and a bias there that you know that they that they, they that clearly is affecting that clearly is affecting their judgment one of the things that was interesting about the reaction was that in this world where any attempt to criticize any celebrity or you know or particularly a comedian for any joke they've told or anything they've said um, is immediately labeled as cancel culture and you know, and all of the, anyone who, who anyone who attempts to be a critic or criticise it is labelled as a snowflake, and they're told, you know, oh fuck your feelings, and it's just a joke, and you don't have the right to not be offended, which I've never understood because you do have a right to not be offended, um, and you, you you have a right to be offended, and you have a right to I express uh, that offence. Um, but what's interesting is a lot of the criticism and outrage that has been directed at Jimmy Carr has come from elements of the media um, who are normally the first people to jump up and down and complain about snowflakes 
and cancel culture. There has been almost no, you know, and if they haven't, if it, if they haven't attempted to criticise Carr, they've at least stayed silent on the issue and chosen not to, not to, not to get involved and uh, sling their two cents. In you know, there's almost nobody within you know, even exp even even you know, uh, you know, publications like the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, anyone who was within the anti woke, you know, mob uh, media, um, has attempted to defend Carr. In, in you know, in most cases, some you know, some you know, either speaking out against him or trying to remain neutral whilst you know reporting other people's outrage and disgust. And this is interesting, particularly considering at the moment, you know, when, comp when you compare it to how vehemently and passionately those same media outlets, those same right wing media outlets are, are you know, are, cannot fucking, that, you know, you can't stop them jumping to the defense of Joe Rogan, you know, and sucking him off and, and you know, and defending him every, and, and Joe Rogan is, is in trouble not for telling a joke, but for actually expressing real views that he hold, holds. Um, so it's interesting how people, you know, these people choose to be silent on this issue. I I'm not going to go into it here, but we all know that there is a, that, you know, the hypocrisy when it comes to this idea that cancel culture is this, you know, is this thing that comes from the left and nowhere else is, 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 is horseshit. Right, so, and this is just an, another example of the hypocrisy, you know, of people, you know, who are willing to jump to the defence of cert of people, of certain people on who say certain things about certain issues, as freedom of speech, you know, but when it comes to defending someone who they don't like, oh, they'll they'll join in on that. Now, the first thing that I find interesting about this uh, issue is that Jimmy Carr. Re the, the, this show, His Dark Material, was released on Netflix on the 25th of December, Christmas Day, last year. And even though it was only on Netflix for a week, it managed to become, in that week, the most viewed uh, show, the most viewed show, or certainly the most viewed comedy show, on Netflix in the UK uh, in 2021, in just seven days. And I'm willing to bet, I haven't looked this up, but I will bet my bollocks to a barn dance that, um, the, that uh, if you look at the last couple of weeks, it's probably got even more attention. I mean, you know, people, certain, because, because that's generally what, hap what happens. I mean, uh, you know, people are going to go, you know, well, I need to, I need to watch this fucking sh I need to watch this show if, the, you know, if this is the outrage that it's causing, you know. I had to watch the show just to make this video, but I probably would have done so anyway, even if I wasn't. But what I find interesting is that it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago, you know, roughly six weeks after the show is released, that there is this outrage about it. Now, normally that's, I find that kind of interesting. Why did it take six weeks for the most viewed show on Netflix last, for this one uh, you know, joke to, get, to 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 suddenly become the dominant the dominant story in the news. From what I can gather, this the, the this started with some random Twitter user. You know, he posted a a tweet with a thirty second clip. Um, you know, sort of, sort of condemning uh, you know Jimmy Carr uh, and. Um, for, you know, and and sort of you know expressing his own disgust at this joke. Now the and and the video was him filming it off of a screen. You know, whether it was a computer screen or his smart TV. So so what we can gather from that is that this guy watched the entire show. You know, I think it's fair to assume this guy watched the entire show. You know, because if he's filming it off a screen, I very much doubt he would skip right to the end. He would have had to watch the whole thing from beginning to end. Now, the fact that this guy and, you know, certainly I'm sure other people have, you know, watched this whole show, but this is, this is the joke that seems to be, you know, over the line, um, is interesting because um, at the very start of the show, and this is very common, and I think this is something that Jimmy Carr didn't have to do, because given the nature and, you know, given, given the fact that Jimmy Carr's whole thing is, 
you know, uh, is telling these, uh, you know, is these incredibly um, controversial and edgy, dark, dark humor, gallows humor style one liners. And, you know, given that that is his thing, um, you would, you know, you would imagine that it would be, you know, people would watch it already. But um, he started the show with what, you know, effectively we would call a content or trigger warning, you know, you know, li you know, t you know telling people. You know, he literally tells people at the start of the show, you know, in this in this show, I'm going to be, you know, you know, there are moments where I'm going to go, you know, it's called his darker material. Um, so, you know, it, so so he, he's made it perfectly clear. He has made it com abundantly clear right from the start that if you know that I'm going to be going to much, much darker places than normal. And uh, you know, and I'm going to be and making jokes and uh, and covering this in you know, these sort of areas and these issues. Um, if you and and it, so if you're not if if that's the sort of thing you're not into, or if that's the kind of thing you know that's going you're potentially going to be upset or bothered by, don't watch the show. The fact is, people are now watching. People are now commenting. Who and I bet a lot of them have only seen this clip. They haven't watched the show. You know, probably because these are the kind of people who would never watch a Jimmy Carr show. They've probably never seen, you know, they, they probably know him from TV, from, you know, from 8 out of 10 cats or, you know, from the you know Big Fat Quiz of the Year or whatever. But they've never seen his, his live stand-up stuff. And they would probably never make an effort. That tends to be the case that people who get offended by these clips that circulate of, sta of comedians do of certain jokes comedians have told on stage it, it, the outrage comes from people who would never have seen that or heard that joke had it not been you know been you know put into a public into a public uh, forum where anyone can anyone can hear it and uh, you yeah, know and more importantly they hear it with no you know understand with no context or with no sort of understanding or idea maybe of even who the comedian is or what they have said previously or after. Which, to me, begs the question, what is the point of trigger warnings? What is the point of content warnings? If, you know, if, if, if people are going to actively ignore them, Right. I remember, you know, many years ago, I think this was in the late 90s, there was this documentary on Channel 4, and it was called The Complainers. And it was about these groups of fucking miserable old shites who would deliberately watch stuff on television or whatever that they knew they were not going to like, just so they could complain about it. And I, and I wonder now... Is is this the is this what trigger warnings or you know or content warnings you know or you know parental advisory lo labels or you know or any kind of label is that is this what they're going to you know are, are these just now flags for people hey do you want something to piss and moan about you know at the end of the day comedians you know, you know at the end of the day Jimmy Carr has gone to the trouble of making it clear that the of what the content of this show is and that. It's not for everybody, and, you know, if it's not your cup of tea, you shouldn't watch it. If you still choose to watch this show, then really, are you not, you know, do you not bear some responsibility? And if you are the person who posts this joke, who, who posts this joke on Twitter or any other public forum, and it, that joke, that specific joke is then seen by tens, hundreds, maybe millions of people who, who, you know, who are going to be, who is going to offend and upset. Do you not bear some responsibility? Because Jimmy Carr didn't post that show on Twitter. Jimmy Carr didn't make it, didn't, you know, make it, you know, publicly viewable. Jimmy Carr didn't share that joke. And this is something, this is somewhere where, you know, I think the, you know, you know, nowadays with social media, you know, you know, everyone should be held uh, accountable to this but you know but there are there have been cases in the past when you know the media when just mainstream media has has found out about a comedian telling an offensive joke about something um, in a venue maybe with a thousand people 
and uh, and they then proceed to you know everyone to jump on this story and and talk about the outrage and how disgusting and 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 how evil and despicable it is that this comedian told this joke you know not realizing that you know that had they not done that the only people who would have heard that joke were the 500 people in the venue at the time you know but now because of them literally millions of people have heard that joke who didn't have to and i think you bear some you know the media and you know people now in general need to bear some responsibility for you know for you know you know because you can't just say this person said this and it's offensive and disgusting and it's you know it's outrageous because if you're sharing it does nothing but spread knowledge and 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 spread that joke or that you know that offensive comment around so that other people who are going to be offended by it are now going to be see it and be affected by it right whose fault is that now, i'm not saying it's not G the comedian's fault I'm not saying Jimmy Carr does not bear any responsibility. Of course he does. Right? But everybody else involved, anyone who has shared that clip or anybody, any, any news, any media outlet that has done a story on it and, you know, written the joke down or whatever, you bear some responsibility too. You know, but if we're not going to listen to trigger warnings, then what, mo what is the point in putting them there? Now we get onto the nature of how how valid is the outrage and offence, and I want to make it clear, and I've I've made this clear bef in the past. You know, I don't have a, I do not have any problem with people who are offended by jokes. You know, I don't have a problem with with, with people being offended by jokes. I don't think it's you know I find it I personally find it incredibly frustrating and almost insulting to my to mine and your intelligence when comedians certain comedians um will you know, will write material that is you know and comedians in general will talk about how it's our you know comedians are you know it's our job it's our you know we you know we you know it's our job to push boundaries and uh, cross the line and say things that are unsayable okay that's fine if the, you know i disagree with that i think a comedian's job is to be funny and tell jokes you are under no obligation to do it in any in a certain way you know there have been lots of you know brilliant and wonderful and incredibly talented and just you know and glorious and you know and, and you know just wonderful comedians you know who you know, you know who were not over who didn't go over the line who didn't push boundaries but that doesn't make them any less any less brilliant but if you're going to do that, you have to be willing to face the fucking consequences. But what, you know, because if you're going to push the line, you know, or push the boundaries or cross the line of what, you know, if, of what is acceptable or what people consider to be, you know, you know, bad taste or poor taste or offensive, then you have to be willing to accept that you are going to cause offence to people. You know, you, you, you know, you are what you're what you're going to say is going to be reacted to in such a way. Why would you complain about that? That's what I don't get. That's what pisses me off. If you want to cross the line, if you want to push boundaries and if you want to, like, you know, try and, you know, challenge the, the social norms of what is acceptable. More power to you. But don't fucking get don't get all fucking minstrel about it when people react to you know, the offensive things you've said with offense and then you act as if you've been as if it's ridiculous why would anybody be offended because that's what you what you wrote the joke for looking at you Ricky Gervais Bill Maher you know but what's interesting is like when you look at the outrage or the the offense that people have taken to this joke and I'm not I'm certainly not going to sit here I know because I hate it when people do this, um, you know, I hate it when people do this, you know, with, you know, you know, you know, to me. And I hate it when they do it in general, you know, when any any time there is outrage or there is, a, you know, there's a backlash or, you know, people are you know offended en masse by something. People will accuse them of, you know, of, of, of fake outrage. It's, you know, I can't 
prove to you that any outrage that I've expressed is genuine. Uh, the same way I can't prove that Alex Jones believes the crazy shit that he says. You know, I'm just going to take it at face value. You know, it, to me, it's just an attempt to delegitimize what might be a, a genuinely you know, justified and you know, reasonable reaction to something. Yeah. And let me make it clear as, as well that, you know, there have been, there have been, you know, so th there have been reasonable and fair criticisms of Jimmy Carr. Um, I, you know, I, I think the most, you know, if you want to go and, you know, look up one that was, I thought, you know, was, was you know, very, very thoughtful was uh, by David Baddiel. Um, uh, he's, a, who's, who's, you know, if you're not familiar, David Baddiel is a, a Jewish comedian who's you know been been around for decades as well um, in, in this um, in this country. The problem here is comedians, particularly comedians like Jimmy Carr, tend to thrive, you know, off controversy. In the world of comedy, controversy that is credibility as well. You know, that's just, you know that is something that is your currency. That is the that is something that you you know, you can use to your advantage. But there is nothing, I, you know, that, there is nothing that makes you want to watch something more. You know, and not just with comedy, you could, you could apply this to TV shows, you could apply this to books, you could apply this to music. You know, anytime something comes with this, you know, this huge, you know, backstory or this, you know, the, or anytime you, you look at something and go, there's this, you know, there are people who are outraged and offended by this or, you know, the Pope has condemned this or these people are protesting, you know, outside, you know, outside gigs or, or, you know, or concerts, you know, or places where this person is performing or, you know, the, you know, there have been calls to ban this book or, you know, this, this, you know, you can guarantee that, you know, that is the best. I mean, I used to, I remember when I started out in stand up. I, I would fucking, you know, there is, you know, I would have given my fucking, the larger of my three testicles to fucking, be, you know, be able to have a bunch of fucking nutters outside, you know, my fucking show chanting, you know, you know, calling for me to be fucking strung up and fucking, you know, and, and calling for this, my show to be fucking banned and for me to be thrown in a fucking, you know, in a gulag. I, you know, I would have loved it. One of the problems these days is, and you know, and I've said this before, but I'll make it clear again. You know, people like to say, and it's an easy thing, and I, you know, I'm not saying it's not true, but I don't think, you know, but you know, I, I don't think it's uh, you know as important as people make it out. People talk about how everybody's people are so much more easily offended these days, and that's bollocks to me. Um, I don't think there's any evidence. I mean, you know, in the 1950s, Elvis was not allowed to be shown on television from the waist down they like he was owned because his pelvic gyrations were considered to be too you know explicit and pornographic for anyone you know for people to to, to, to for people to see right and 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 that's almost the opposite of the world we live in now i go on you know i look on i can go on you know and see music videos these days that it literally it's just women's asses it's just asses you know and not even not face it you know not, not even you know, not even tits just the asses wobbling around that's all it is yes things have changed i think the landscape has changed because of social media it's made people um it's made it's made it so that people have to deal directly with a lot of criticism or outrage, you know, in, in an immediate and sense, and one that it, that they personally have to actually bear the brunt of. In the old, you know, twenty years ago, you know, you didn't have to do that. You know, people had to make the effort to phone up the TV show station to complain or write a letter to the Daily Mail. And yes, there are going to be people who jump on bandwagons and people who, you know, use it. But you know, that's again, that's really much. That's really always been the case there have always been um you know people who've you know scapegoats um this you know much in the way that marilyn manson became a scapegoat um for you know after columbine although based on you know his you know what we found out about him in recent years maybe those nutty christians did have a point you know, because mark chapman had a copy of fucking catcher in the rye in his pocket that suddenly becomes a book everyone wants to fucking own right the pope wanting to fucking ban the da vinci code you know, which, you know, which, you know, to be honest, I think personally he wanted to do that because it was shit, right? But unfortunately it had the reverse effect because who wouldn't want to read a book 
that the Pope wants to fucking ban. Whenever something like this happens and you're going to, you know, you're going to try to capitalize on it, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, who are you trying to reach? You know, what is what is your target audience? Um, because as far as Jimmy Carr getting cancelled, no. Uh, the reason for that is simple, is that if you are a fan of Jimmy Carr, then you are not going to be bothered by this. This is not going to bother or... And, and, and one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest, you know, clues that I'm... You know, one of the biggest pieces of evidence, you know, that backs up, you know, me saying that, backs up that claim, is the fact that Jimmy Carr, you know, you know, sat there that show sat there for six fucking weeks and nobody said anything until one random person pops up on twitter with one clip it goes viral and suddenly everyone wants to fucking jump up and down and it's like and jimmy carr is not a new comedian so the, the, the question then becomes what are you looking to achieve you know well there have been different um you know people have had uh, different some people have called for jimmy carr to apologize um, that's not going to happen. You know, one of the main, one of the more common uh, c complaints, you know, or you know, uh, or um, things that people have called for is for uh, venues to cancel his shows. Um, again, that's not going to happen because Jimmy Carr is going to, you know, is going to sell out. And um, and at the end of the day, show business, despite what people think, um, despite what people may think about some kind of, you know, you know, the the, the show business, uh, you know. That no aspect of show business is woke, you know, or cares about, you know, that what they care about is selling tickets. And if they don't give a shit, you know, what you've been accused of, what you're guilty of. I mean, Bill Cosby, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Bill Cosby was playing sold out theatres after 50 women had publicly come forward to accuse him of drugging and raping them. Right. He was even on stage, you know, it, you know, in one of the shows, he even made a joke about it. When a woman in the front row got up, went to the toilet, he made a joke about saying, oh, you better take your drink with you because you don't want to leave that around, you know. And people laughed, right? So that's not going to happen. Um, Netflix, you know, have been called, uh, they, people have called on Netflix to pull the show. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, and if you don't believe, and if you're not, if you want to know, how I can know that uh, two words, Dave Chappelle, you know, they we've tried this already that, you know, there are even people walking out and pro there were people actively who worked for Netflix protesting that and it's done nothing at the end of the day. If people, if a show is popular, if a person's popular, you know, and, um, and, you know, and controversies like this generally tend to be fleeting, um, you know, they tend to sort of, uh, you know, fade fade away quickly people you know, lose interest and move on but then then we come to what i would consider is the biggest problem for anybody who is who thinks that this joke specifically this joke by jimmy carr has is is you know is 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 the over the is is gone too far this is the you know this specific joke and the problem for for, for, for anyone with that you know, who's expressing that view is literally everything else Jimmy Carr has ever told on stage as a joke, because the Holocaust joke, as I said earlier, is, a jo you know, he told that that was the last joke. That was the final joke he told at the end of his one hour uh, routine. Now, as I said, it's fair to assume that the person who posted that joke, who posted that clip that went viral and went and, and you know sort of kicked all this off, that person you know having recorded it off a off a off a TV screen must have watched the entire show, and you know and and so <clears throat> what I think um, so if it's fair to assume they watched the whole show, and um, because they only posted that joke and you know they didn't mention anything else, you know then clearly what they're then it's again fair to assume that. Everything else Jimmy Carr said in that show, up to that point, before that joke, they were okay with. And had he not told that joke at the end, they would never have, you know, this never would, you know, they never would have posted anything about this on Twitter. Here are four jokes that he told in this show 
Right? This is not going through his back catalogue of 20 years of, uh, of live shows. This is in the same show before the Holocaust joke. Uh, he made a joke about how, you know, he refers to little people as, as dwarfs. And he says that the reason he uses the term dwarf is because he finds the word little, per little people, you know, to be somewhat patronising and, and uh, ridiculous. You know, because little, you know, obviously, and people. <clears throat> and then he does that. Now, that is a, that is a joke suggesting that people who, little people, you know, of any variety, um, are not actually people. There were little people in the, in the Nazi concentration camps too. This isn't a specific reference to that, but if we choose to take literally what he just said, I think if you were a little person, little people have a right to, if they heard that joke, you know, to be offended by that. Would you not say? I was, he, he makes a joke about saying he was in a porn film once, you know, and he says, this was, this was what, before I was famous, you know, long, long ago, when I was a child. Now, now that's a joke about child pornography. Whether or not you think the joke is, you know, the joke is somewhat softened by the fact that it's a joke about him being in it. The fact is, it's a joke about child pornography. Uh, he makes a joke about um, prosthetic li about prosthetic limbs. Um, saying that you know, saying that he knew somebody who was you know worked for the marketing department of a company that made prosthetic limbs, sort of su suggesting you know quite reasonably that that's a ridiculous fucking you know position because there doesn't you know you don't need marketing for prosthetic limbs. The best way to be you know to you know work within the marketing department of prosthetic limbs is to also sell landmines. Now that's a joke about people losing their losing their arms and legs because they stepped on landmines. Now, is that funny? Do you think someone who's lost their limbs because they've stepped on a landmine would, you know, would be, would find that funny? Okay, he also makes a joke about, you know, I know a lot of people who, you know, are, who are bipolar. And by that, I mean, I know a lot of uh, women, right? Now, that is a joke that is both uh, ableist and sexist. So what's my point? I'm not suggesting that you have to like these jokes as well. And I'm not suggesting that you need to retract any of your criticisms or attacks on Jimmy Carr, you know, for, or his you know, joke about gypsies in the Holocaust. But if you are someone who watched Jimmy Carr's, sh who watched this show, and you didn't get offended by any of it, he told those, and those are just four jokes. There's loads others I could I could tell. I could give examples of, and that's just in this show. Right? If those four jokes and all the others that he told, if if they didn't bother you, if you were okay with them, or you maybe even maybe you even laughed at them and found them funny, then you have to explain to me, right? As someone now, I'm someone who does not fall, you know, you know, I am not in any of the groups that are, you know, in any of these jokes that I've mentioned. Where, you know, be it the four there or the, right? So, you have to explain to me, why is that joke about gypsies in the hollow? why does that cross the line? Why is that unacceptable? Why is that too far? But jokes mocking mental illness, women, you know, people with, you know, people with, who, you know, people who've lost their arms and legs in, you know, in, in the, and through landmines, child pornography, or dehumanization of little people why is that okay why are those why have you not got a problem with that now my guess is that the people offended by that joke are probably people who fall into the category of the you know, of either you know something to do with the holocaust or specifically gypsies and traveling travelers roma whatever right and because of that that joke stuck with you more but the other jokes, because they don't affect you, because you don't have a, you know, because you don't, you're not, you're not you know, personally and emotionally in, in every way, your very being is not invested, right? You didn't see or feel the same, the, any offence, the, the level of offence, you know, you felt that this crossed the line because you felt that, the, because this personally affects you. And don't get me wrong, I, I think all of, all forms of offence 
and all forms of you know outrage are are, are are understandable and justified right there is no right or wrong way for anybody no one can tell you how you should react to any joke but i would like to know why you expect everyone else to care about the fact that you were offended by this when quite clearly you don't give a fuck about anyone else's feelings who might have been hurt or upset or offended by jokes Jimmy Carr told prior to him telling that. That's all I want. Why is that the li limit and the others are acceptable? This is why I think it would be wrong for Jimmy Carr to apologise for any one specific joke that gets pulled out of the many that he's told. Because if he's got to apologise for one, he's got to apologise for all of them. And if he apologises, he's kind of implying that he means, he meant on some level, you know. And if he doesn't believe that, and if that's not true, then why would he apologise? Now we get onto you know, the issue of certain people specifically who I need to, who I feel need to be called out here, who have jumped on the Jimmy Carr bandwagon. The first one I want to talk about and is a guy called Judge uh, Robert Rinder. Now, if you're not familiar with Judge Rinder, I don't know if it's Rinder or Rinder, I don't give a fuck. Um, judge Rinder, is a, he's a proper legit judge. Um, he basically, you know, he you know, became famous in this country for the host of what was effectively a Judge Judy-ish show. Um, and he's, you know, where he st sits in, you know, and, uh, you know, passes judgment on cases and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, he's now, you know, he's now expanded into a g general sort of, you know, he, you know, he's, he's also, you know, he, he has several columns and he's a, you know, a, and he's a writer and he's also a radio host. Um, and uh, he also happens to be Jewish, and um, he jumped on this, you know, uh, Jimmy, this story about Jimmy Carr, and uh, even you know, dedicating his uh, radio show, one of his, ra you know, one of the, you know, one of his, one of the uh, his talk radio show that he do does uh, to it, um, and tweeting, you know, and and posting, you know, v you know, just complete and utter disgust and how appalled he was, and. Like I said, I'm not, I would never sit there and suggest that his outrage is, is, is not, is, is not real. You know, I, I'm, you know, it almost certainly is. Um, but here's something that you need to know about Judge, about Judge Robert Rinder. And that is that he currently, and has, has been since 2014, uh, been a contributing writer um, to a newspaper called The Sun. I don't know about you, folks, but um, if uh, if you're if you're certainly if you're British, you'll know this. Um, and uh, you know if you're if if you're if you're if you're, if, you're, if you're American, then you know for The Sun, just imagine like Fox News but printed on paper, right? It's it, it's a pile of shit, right? And it, it is, you know, it is the, it is, you know, the tabloidiest of all the right-wing tabloids. It's obviously, yes, it's owned by Rupert Murdoch. It is an appalling fucking, you know, uh, and it is, it is an abomination, of, you know, when it comes, you know, uh, on the, um, it, is, it is a fucking giant cancerous polyp on the colon of, of, of real, ju of journalism. And... The idea that Robert Rinder, who describes Jimmy Carr's joke as breathtakingly racist, when he he has spent eight years taking a paycheck, you know, writing a column and proudly putting on his Twitter profile that he, you know, is a you know is employed and paid by the Sun newspaper, the paper who among many, many, many other outrages, but, you know, printed a column, you know, when they, when Katie Hopkins was there, you know, she, they printed a piece she wrote about how she would have refugees or asylum seekers lined up 
yeah, lined up on the uh, you know, on the shores of Dover or you know whatever wherever they put t wherever they turned up on this country and shot. The fact that he would sit there, I, I'm quite you know I don't I haven't researched this, but I will bet my fucking bollocks to a barn dance that if we want to look at the you know you know if we want to look at which of the two which of these two has had a more damaging effect on promoting ignorance bigotry irrational hatred fear xenophobia racism anti-semitism islamophobia you know homophobia any phobia you want any form of fucking hatred ignorance or prejudice that exists right jimmy carr is grenada to the sun's fucking u.s military right end of and i and don't even nobody will convince me you cannot change my mind and if you're happy to sit there and take a fucking paycheck from the sun newspaper whilst condemning a comedian for one joke that he told a joke that you wouldn't have heard because you never clearly listened to him right? if you're willing to do that you lose your complaints lose all form of credibility with me another uh, you know gr uh, organization and this I'm, i have to treat this as an organization and i want to make it clear this is a good organization this is not a, this is not an organization that is in any who i in any way you know want to come across that i'm anti i'm not but one of the other group uh, organizations or groups that condemned jimmy carr and if, even went as far as issuing a statement was the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Now again, like I said, great organization in general. However, Holocaust Memorial Day um, was not that long ago. It was a few, it was about three weeks ago. I think, I think it was about a week before the Jimmy Carr stuff broke. And, and for those of you who, uh, who don't pay attention to this, um, in, in this country on, on Holocaust Memorial Day, there was a, um, and it took a couple of days for people to notice this, but uh, a tweet uh, surfaced. A, a tweet um, suddenly went viral a few days after Holocaust Memorial Day, and it was a tweet by the Battersea Power Station, um, which is a you know, massive Battersea Power Station. Is this you know very very sort of recognisable building as you come in from the southeast into London uh, from you know, into Victoria Station, and you can see it's got these huge huge columns and uh, and uh, chimneys um, that. Um, you know, it's a very recognisable sort of iconic building. And on Holocaust Memorial Day, in order to pay tribute to those who lives that were lost in the Holocaust, Battersea Power Station decided to illuminate their giant chimneys. And like, how did you... And, and people were just sharing this fucking... It could, no, just staggered. Like, how the fuck did you not think... How could you, how could anybody, at any point, how many people had, did this idea have to pass through without anyone going, hold on, illuminating our chimneys in, in, in tribute to, as a, you know, as a tribute to those who died in the Holocaust? Is this, you know, I mean, it's like, imagine if, imagine if, um, you know, sort of, it's like a, a DIY store, like, home base or you know or you know or um you know home depot you know on to honor the you know in honor of holocaust memorial day we're having a ma massive sale on pesticides right it's that you know it's like sotheby's fucking you know having a special auction to remember slavery it's so glaring it's stupid it's almost satiric it's almost impossible to satire right now what's this got to do with the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Well, it turns out the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust were the ones who came up with the idea for Battersea Power Station to illuminate their, you know, and which kind of for me says, okay, I can understand it from, because Battersea Power Station probably did not want to be the, the people who, you know, got in trouble or got exposed because they refused to pay tribute to the to the Holocaust. No, this was the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust's idea. And 
And they admitted this in the replies of the actual uh, post by Battersea Power Station. And, and, and do you know what happened? Um, well, they did not apologise for it. Instead, Battersea Power Station deleted the tweet and nothing was ever said of it. Now, I realise that the intent of Jimmy Carr is different to that of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. But do you not think it's reasonable to suggest that the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust should at least publicly apologise? Because if there's no, because if you're going to be, if you're going to work for an organisation who's who has one job to, you know, to memorialise the Holocaust, that's it. Should you not be? Should you not have enough common sense to work out that? illuminating the giant chimneys on a building is not it, it is a stupid fucking idea it's a bad idea and that if you were responsible for that that you should at least apologize but they didn't now i don't i'm not bothered by it but i expect but that's but my point is you know it's kind of difficult to sit there and listen to you objecting to jimmy carr doing what jimmy carr has and always has done I don't expect Jimmy Carr to deal with any subject matter sensitively. You know, I do expect that from them. Right? So that's where. So, just I'm just saying that maybe before you're to you jump on the Jimmy Carr wagon, let's not forget that you yourself have made glaring and you know incredibly fucking stupid mistakes, poor mistakes of judgment, and that you should really know better. Now, the last individual who I want to talk about, who um, went on, uh, who had a go at Jimmy Carr, is w world heavyweight boxing champion Tyson Fury, um, who effectively, um, you know, who effectively threatened Jimmy Carr, uh, who threatened physically Jimmy Carr, uh, quote, you're getting chinned. Um, now, Tyson Fury, as you all know, his whole thing is he's the gypsy king. Um, so obviously you can see why Tyson Fury would, uh, you know, be personally offended or upset. But then really we have to ask ourselves if Tyson Fury is going to get upset at Jimmy Carr for saying something offensive as a joke. And if we accept it's a joke in the sense that Jimmy Carr was not expressing his true beliefs. Maybe we should take into account some of the things that Tyson Fury has said in the past, um, things that he did not mean as a joke, things that he didn't say ironically, uh, things that were not part of a uh, things that were not part of a, a comedy special. Um, these are things that he genuinely believes and expressed you know, in a public forum, in front of, usually in front of a press, um, in the build-up to his 2015 fight with Vladimir Klitschko, Fury likened homosexuality to paedophilia and explained that he believes the legislation of homosexuality and abortion are two of the three things that need to be accomplished before the devil comes home. That was in 2015. So, in a 2013 interview, Fury claimed that he would hang his sister if he deemed her to be promiscuous, and has said that he believes a woman's best place is in the kitchen and on her back. So, women can't be promiscuous, the best place is on her back. Um, oh, and he also said, and this is a quote, uh, everyone just do what you can. Listen to the government follow everybody like sheep. Be brainwashed by all the Zionist Jewish people who own all the banks, all the papers, all the TV stations. Be brainwashed by them all. And he said that before comparing the existence of transgender people to the practice of bestiality, claiming that sexual relations with animals will be legalised within 10 years. So, in short, Tyson Fury, if you're offended by Jimmy Carr's joke, right, go fuck yourself. Good. I'm glad you were offended. Maybe, 
Maybe, before you piss and moan about his one joke, maybe you should think about, th think about all of the Jewish people you've offended, the transgender people, the gay people, the women, people who've had abortions, any of those people, really, who you have, j who you have expressed the most fucking ridiculously, insanely, offensive fucking opinions on in the last few years. Something to consider. I want to make it clear. The, the fact that the three examples I've given just there, you know, they are examples, they're not there to invalidate criticism. You know, the criticisms they've had of Carr are still valid and could still have weight. The point I'm trying to make is this is the twisted hypocrisy. This is how almost any complaint about a specific joke one comedian, t a comedian tells is automatically going to be shown to be hypocritical because almost all the people who are going to attack who are, who are attacking Jimmy Carr have said have said worst or are quite happy to be associated with you know much more influential you know organizations that have d done nothing but promote the very hatred they claim to be a and racism that they are outraged by that they are claiming that they are accusing Jimmy Carr of. And if it's not that, it's things that they've said that, unlike Jimmy Carr, cannot be simply, cannot be described as jokes. And, you know, the point is this, is it's all very well being offended, I, but if it doesn't cause you any self-reflection, where was your outrage and offence? Because it's easy to have a go at one person. It's easy to have a go and jump on the bandwagon about Jimmy Carr, but I'd like to see, I'd like you to be, to, to, you know, be held accountable for and explain and justify your silence in areas where you clearly have shown no objection and by your own standards you should have done. However, and this is where, you know, you might think I'm getting, you know, a little bit conspiratorial, right? I don't think that the clip the uh, you know this clip of Jimmy Carr that was posted on Twitter I don't think it went viral you know by you know it, it, it just went viral now it was legit and I don't think the person involved has got anything to do you know it, this is not part of some conspiracy theory but I do think that this you know Jimmy Carr story was used by you know by politicians and by the government currently in power in order for them to try and, and, and keep people diverted, attention diverted at Jimmy Carr, and for them to even attempt to try and curry favour with all of the people outraged by, Jim, you know, by Jimmy Carr. Because it, now, there have been several politicians who have come forward, um, not just with criticism, but things, some things much more troubling than that, and with, without a doubt are the most hypocritical. And to an almost laughable extent, are, are those people you know, who criticise Jimmy Carr who are members of the Conservative Party, right? Now, Boris Johnson did not comment on it himself, but a spokesperson for Jimmy, for, for a spokesperson for Boris um, did, did uh, come forward and say, um, obviously those comments are deeply disturbing and it is unacceptable to make light of genocide. Now that was a spokesperson, but this is Boris Johnson. This is Boris Johnson, the guy who describes gay people in pride parades as sh as, as tank top wearing bum boys. The guy who described Af African children as pickaninnies with watermelon smiles. Right. This is Boris Johnson, the guy who compared uh, you know Muslim women who wear the burqa to letter boxes. This is Boris Johnson who. Not, uh, you know, just last week, jokingly in the Houses of Parliament, you know, joked about Keir Starmer being responsible for Jimmy Savile be, you know, walking free and never getting, you know, never being, conf and which is, and Keir Starmer was actually, you know, you know, harangued and attacked in the street. He was accosted by groups of people and Boris Johnson refused to fucking take responsibility 
for that. So go fuck yourself on that. Saji Javid, also from the Conservative Party, condemned uh, Jimmy Carr, saying, you know, calling for a boycott against the comedian. Hmm, sounds, that's, isn't that, isn't that boycott? Isn't that, uh, that's cancel culture, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, after, you know, he called for a boycott after a horrid, uh, after horrid uh, jokes about the Hoggers. But without doubt, the one, the, the one sort of person in the Conservative Party that is the most troubling, the most hilarious, and but the most disturbing was Nadine Dorries. Um, because she didn't just criticise uh, Jimmy Carr. Uh, she was interviewed on BBC Breakfast. She said the following. We are looking at legislation via the media bill which would bring into scope those comments from other video-on-demand streaming outlets like Netflix. So it's interesting that we're already looking at future legislation to bring into scope those sorts of comments. You know, and she described Jimmy Carr's joke as abhorrent and said that it shouldn't be on television. Now, I, you know, like I said, I, w I am not saying that you have you do not have to like jimmy carr or jimmy carr's joke or anything you don't have to like any joke by any comedian but the idea that nadine dorries is going to jump on this and use this as a way of literally censoring people and censoring free speech censoring you know she's going to punish people She's going to try and pass laws, making it illegal for people to, sp to, to make jokes that are offensive. Now, what's interesting, and fair play to the interviewer for bringing this up, because Nadine Doris, uh, in 2017, uh, posted a tweet in which she claimed left-wing snowflakes are killing comedy. This is a Nadine Dorries makes that statement. Okay. She said, well, that's not comedy. What Jimmy Carr did, she said last night, it wasn't last night, it was about two months ago. What Jimmy Carr did is not comedy. Now, we live in a world where, you know, we have, there is, there is all sorts of forms of entertainment. And... Some of them, you know, and, and not all of them are to, are to everybody's taste. And I understand, I completely understand that, you know, we, you know, that with certain types of, you know, comedy, as with certain types of music and film and uh, TV show, there are just things that certain people, you know, you know, there are things that are not going to appeal to everybody. And that's fine. You don't have to like everything. But don't think that you not liking something means that you have to, you know, have a right to now say that nobody gets to fucking like that. And that nobody is allowed. And people like Judge Rinder, who, who said that anybody who was in that audience watching Jimmy Carr, who, you know, laughed, or anybody who laughed at that joke is, you know, is a, is a vile turd. You know, while sitting there getting a fucking paycheck from Rupert Murdoch and writing for the biggest fucking shithole right wing rag in this fucking planet. You don't get, you know, and of all people, Nadine Dorries should, you know, nobody, no politician, no politician, nobody should get to tell anybody what is and is not comedy. She can't even do her own fucking job that she's paid for. And she thinks she has the right to start telling comedians what comedy is. And that's the fucking get out clause, isn't it? That's how they get out of being hypocrites. You know, because when, you know, when people on the left, when, when, anyone, when any amount of criticism seems to come from the left directed at, at a comedian or a you know, personality, like Joe Rogan. Oh, that's cancel culture. That's them attempting to censorship 
create, you know, that's them attempting to, you know, they're trying to control and, uh, you know, they're, it's, and it's uh, all this other fucking bollocks. But now she's talking about looking into passing laws, telling you and me and everyone else what it's acceptable to fucking make a joke about. Before, if that doesn't fucking offend you or terrify you more, it will do if it ever happens. One last thing before I go, and I realise this has been a long video, and if you've sat here for this length, I appreciate it. If you would like to support me on Patreon, that would be great. If you, you know, would also like to give this video a like, comment, share, you know, have a discussion. You know, we're well, you're welcome. Like I said, you know, all opinions and ideas on this are welcome. Um, but I, I, I think there's one more thing that we need, that needs to be said. There's one more thing I want to sort of uh, put by you. A as someone who has written his fair share of jokes that were, you know, you know, dealing with sensitive issues, you know, when I write a joke, I have one standard, which is, will I, can I tell this, would I tell this joke in front of any audience? And I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure Jimmy Carr, um, would have, you know, would have that same sense. I can't imagine Jimmy Carr holding back over certain... In fact, during the show, he does some very funny material about um, anti-vaxxers, where he actually gets people... He, he asks people in the audience who are skept, who are sceptical about the vaccine, you know, it's like who he's like... And, and he does it in a way where it's kind of safe, and, they cheer, and he then just rips and destroys the motherfucker who, you know, you know clearly... And, and it's quite clear that he's, you know... There's, you know, he's joking, obviously, but there's some level of, of honesty there. You know, Jimmy Carr actually, you know, after he tells that joke, he actually explains to the, you know, he actually he says, you know, why he tells that, why he decided, or why, you know, why he likes that joke, or what the point of that joke is. Now, you don't have to agree, again, but if this is his justification, then, you know, then that, that, then that's it. Yeah, I can't see him changing his mind on this. Yeah, this isn't something he's 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 made up. He, he's made up after the controversy. He says this in the show, and I think it's important that this be included. But he actually says the reason he tells he tells that joke is because it's actually a joke that it, that has some educational value, and the educational value is that not a lot of people, you know, or you know, not or, or you know, while some people are you know know about. Uh, you know the um, the tens of thousands of of Roma or travellers or gypsies who were killed in the Holocaust. It, it's not something that's commonly talked about or is common knowledge. And so, by actually making that joke, there are people who are going to hear it who are actually going who who didn't know that before who are going to uh, now uh, who are going to now be able to you know, who who now know about it and may even go and learn about it. Now. You might think that that's ridiculous, but it's interesting that one of the things that's happened as a result of Jimmy Carr's joke was, amid all the outrage and all of the screaming and shouting, was a lot of dialogue and discussion about, um, about the fact that it isn't common knowledge. It isn't well known. But now, it almost certainly is, if you're someone who didn't know before, you almost certainly do now. And I want you to consider this. This, this literally was uh, just, just under a week ago, this story broke. MPs call for Roma genocide to be taught on national curriculum after the Jimmy Carr row. Um, the members of three all-party parliamentary groups, APPGS, have, you know, have written uh, a letter to Education Secretary uh, Nadim Nadim Zawi, uh, Zahawi calling for genocide to be taught in schools. The Holocaust is mandatory subject on the secondary education uh, school history curriculum, but the mass murder of Roma and of, of Roma and Sinti people by the Nazis is not. The letter says it's wholly inappropriate to leave this to the discretion of schools, saying this must change so that the children and society as a whole can fully understand the dangers of othering and racist views 
against Roma and Gypsy communities. That is happening because Jimmy Carr told a joke. That happening is exactly the reason Jimmy Carr wanted to tell that joke. And whether you like it or not, that was not happening before Jimmy Carr told that joke. It is now, it's happening now only because Jimmy Carr told that joke. And if this goes, assuming this goes through and this is added to the curriculum, when people ask, what, why was this added to the curriculum when it was? You know, what, what happened that made this change in the, in the teaching of the Holocaust? The answer is a comedian told a joke. A comedian called Jimmy Carr told a joke and then this happened. That's the fact. And, if, and, and that happening, whether it goes through or not at this stage, the fact that that's happened, and it may happen, and it may, it may go through, for me, vindicates Jimmy Carr, per, it, it vindicates everything he said, every reason and justification he gave for telling that joke. And you don't, ha again, you still don't have to like the joke. But the fact is, his joke might be the catalyst for change. And maybe, and I could be wrong, maybe that's the point of jokes like that. And maybe we should not let our personal feelings cloud our judgment and, uh, to, in order to allow the Tory party, who in 2021, who were, part, were trying to pass legislation, again, laws, that would, that would make it easier for police to confiscate the homes of gypsies, Romas, travelling people, if they, would, if they were suspected of fucking, of, of trespassing on land. And this isn't just last year. This goes all the way back. The Tory party, the Conservatives, have no fucking interest in, and, and have no fucking appreciation and don't give a shit about fucking Romas or Gypsies. But where was the outrage then? Again, nothing. Nadine Dorries being made minister for what actually is funny. Then that is a much scarier and offensive fucking notion than anything Jimmy Carr or any other comedian has ever fucking said. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for listening. My name's Brother Nero, a.k.a. Dick Coughlin. Good night, may God be less, and where there's no sense, there's no feeling.